So we've got the V12 unwrapped. That's the engine number there. So what we'll do, and that there is what's leaking. So all this has got to come off in order for me to get to that. Not a problem, I can do that later on. Right, so what I'm thinking, I've put a little bit of tip X on the top of the flywheel, sorry, the clutch plate. Right, now one of the first things that you check is that all of these springs are tight, which they all are. So if the clutch turns out to be fine, when I reassemble it, if I line them two marks up, everybody's happy. Now what I've got to figure out is somewhere putting the camera so you can see what I'm doing. So I will be back in a minute. Okay. That's the pre oh, pressure place on the clutch. I'm just trying to wind the camera up. So then, <clears throat> all the bits and bobs. It's a 14 mil bolt. Now, what tends to happen if you put a socket on, you start trying to undo it, you just turn the engine over like that. Okay, so, a couple of little tricks. You can wedge your screwdriver in the teeth, and that will stop it moving. Okay, might need the extension bar on, to be honest. Let me just put an extension on it. Just give me a bit more clearance. Alright, so I've got that there. I should be able to... There you go. Nice and simple. Don't take all the nuts out. Go on the crosswise pattern. Just loosen them off. Get on there, you bastard. Helps if you can see what you're doing. There's only one left, which is right on the bottom of That's it, all's wrong. Okay. Now, as usual, once I take these bolts out, I'll put them back in. There you go. So, here's one. Now, Everything else we've assembled or disassembled, a tiny little bit of grease on, you can't do anything on the clutch because centrifugal force, as the engine's running, will spit everything out and all the inside of the housing We get caked in oil and there's a good chance of it contaminating the clutch again if it drips. So, we can't have anything. Again, if you can take oh, yeah, out the way, take these off in like a sequential, or as you know, like opposites, so you're not crushing one side and having the other side open. I should have grabbed a ratchet for this, but it doesn't matter. Would you just give me a little bit more? Room, there you go. Is that all of them? Yeah, just these two on the top now.
And then one more. And that's how easy it is to dismantle the clutch. You know what you got to do? You just leave it off. It's secured by these pins, and inside it is a clutch plate. Right, so there's the clutch there. Right, the clutch, please. Little burn marks there and there, look. Oh, I ain't got my legs in the way. <laughs> so, this is the clutch plate now, looking at it sideways on. There's no wear on that, but if you get the light right, you can see little bits of speck, little specks of gold coloured material, could be copper, I don't know, I don't know what clutches are made out of, but what I've been told to check is that the springs are tight, the springs are all good, now I know the clutch works because um, I've driven the bloody car, Right, so that looks okay. <clears throat> Pressure please. Let me just move the camera around. I'm not sure if you can pick that up. But on the pressure plate, it's all scored. Not as in um as in damage scored, scored as in you know, like a vented disc. And that to me all looks good that's what that's all factory done <clears throat> everything on that clutch plate there <coughs> is symmetrical <coughs> so that looks fine <coughs> and now the plate itself the flywheel there's a little hot spot there look, but that could just be where he's welded is it because this is a custom made what do we call it? This is a custom made flywheel by Vince. So I will contact Vince. That's as smooth as a baby's bum. There's no ridges in it. There's no damage to it. So I'll contact Vince and see whether or not he recommends me taking this off and getting it skimmed. Or just replace the clutch. Or even just put the bloody clutch back in. Now I've checked it. So. Yeah. That's um, that's in quite good nick, but there you go, that's how easy it is to take a clutch out. <clears throat> now to reassemble it, you put the wide size on there, and you stick a, a tube, a clutch alignment tool, inside that bearing like that, and that would hold it still. And it just so happens that when you do ours, it's the perfect size for a socket extension bar. It goes right in the middle, just holds it perfect. Now you can get special um, drive shaft alignment tools. I personally just use my finger. I stick my finger in and feel it. And you can feel whether or not it's actually square or if it's not. Um, and obviously if it's not square, it won't align back onto the gearbox. But if it is... It just goes on perfect. I've done hundreds of clutches over the years and I have never ever used an alignment tool. I just stick my finger in, get it tight, waggle it, manoeuvre it into place a little bit and go, yeah, that's perfect. Bolt it all up, double check it and away we go. So, that's that. This thing here, let's have a look around. That's your starter motor there. Starter motor's fine. Um, and this side, hang on, no, it's that side there, there's a leak of this gasket in here. So I'll take all of this assembly off in one go. 
um, and then we'll strip that down but not for today because you know, it's 10 past 2 by the time I've put everything away and had a scrub I've got to go home and get ready for class because I'm teaching tonight but before I go I'll put all them bolts back and that way we won't lose any and I'll put the clutch drive plate in there somewhere safe where I know it's not going to get oops not do all damage let's just put that back and like you say I'll just finger tighten these and get the bastards in now this um this clutching that the this is all custom made by Vince because obviously the Jag V12 comes with a ma uh, automatic gearbox so it comes with a little tiny light flywheel and a great big torque converter so what we did, if I remember rightly, when I sent when we when I ordered my kit, is you send him the flywheel, and he takes off that ring gear with the teeth, takes this piece off. He made up this on his lathe, and then um, welded the what do we call it? Welded the, the the ring gear to it, the teeth. So I think what he actually did is you heat it up. If you heat this one up. And you chill that as the metal expands, you put it on, it cools down, it clamps it. It'll never ever come off. And then obviously, a little bit of welding grinds it all flat. And uh, away you go. I understand the theory of it, but it's way beyond my skill set, to be honest. I've never used a lathe, so I don't... I know how to, how to do it, I've just never done it. So for something like that, that's major precision engineer. That's well beyond my comfort zone. So there you go. I'll just... Um, Nick these bolts up a little bit and then I know they're not going to fall out um, oh, get in there you bastards Now the only thing is the tip X mark I put on is down the bottom there, whereas I had it on the top. It's not a problem. You can turn the engine over. Okay, now. It's not light, so it's not easy to do, but you can turn it over by hand. You can feel the compression on each of the cylinders. So there we go. So if I leave that there, there's me a little bit of tip X back on the top. So when I realign everything, if I use the, decide to use the same clutch, I'm going to put it all back on once it all lines up. Everybody's happy. So that's that. And um, there's not really much more I can do on this now, apart from you know, caked in shite. So I'll go and get. I'll put everything away. I'll go and get a scrub, and I'll get ready for class. And then tonight, when I know Vince has finished work, I'll give him a call. Once, uh, once I know he's finished work, I'll give him a call. Have a chat about this clutch. And I'll do some really like close up video work now and send send them pictures um and see what he says. But um while it's out, I mean it's gonna replace it anyway, so I'm just pissing in the wind. It's the flywheel, I'm not sure about whether or not to take it off and have it skimmed. I'm not sure I need to. But we shall see. I'll see you in a bit. There you go, sausage. I bet it's a while since you've seen this. I've got the clutch off, obviously. Um this is the face on the flywheel. Now I was speaking to a fella the other day who said, well, if you're changing the clutch, why don't you get the flywheel skimmed while it's off? So I don't know the answer to that, to be honest. Um, obviously you know better than me. Would it be worth taking this off, taking it down to an engineer's and getting them to um, to skim it. Now, when you feel it, there's no um, there's no rough spots. Do you know what I mean? It doesn't feel like there's anything wrong with it. But you're an engineer, and I'm not, so I'm going to go off your advice here. Here's the clutch. 
the clutch looks fine you've got little if I can get it in the light I'm not sure if they'll reflect there's um, I don't know what it is whether it's copper or brass I don't know but there's little like goldy coloured flecks coming through it all the springs are fine they're all nice and tight and the wear on it look the wear is even all the way around so there's no I was just about to say there's no damage, there's a little fucking... Oh no, it's not, it's alright. <laughs> I was going to say there's a chip out of it, that's just where it's been. Thingies. So that's the back side. So while it's out, obviously I may as well change it. Flywheel sides. Four, seven, eight, four, nine. I'm just looking for markings. It's a bug and Beck. Fuck that say. Bog and Beck. The CCTD. Yep, made in England. Okay, so. Bog and Beck. Four seven nine one zero. That says something grooved. Anyway, so that's that, right? I'll just leave that there for now. It's not gonna fall off. Now the clutch plate <clears throat> has got all of this on it. Now I don't know whether you did that to give it more friction or what or if that's part of the original machining process so obviously when you've had a look at these videos I'll give you the chance to eat your tea and, uh, and if I can mate I'll give you a ring I'm in class tonight so I'll call after 9 but let me know what you're thinking um, because obviously although I know what I'm looking at from a parts point of view from an engineering point of view I don't know if that's good or if that's bad or if that's normal or abnormal i just don't know so let me know mate and i'll catch up with you later i'll right, we'll give you a quick glimpse of the engine before i put it back away obviously it's all going to be stripped and cleaned and reconditioned but people have gone oh my god that's a bloody big job taking all of that out just to clean and paint the chassis and that well it needs to come out so that we had access to everything but also as well just as a quick look there's a little vacuum hose there look split so you would never have found that you'd never have found that without the engine being out and we're just mooching around so we're going to replace all the vacuum hoses right through here obviously all the water hoses all the vacuum hoses every bloody hose on it is going to be replaced now i spoke to vince about putting a brand new set of hc leads he said don't touch the hc leads they are the super duper top of the range ones um, from Bosch. He said they're the best you can buy. All these aftermarket ones, all the singing and all the dancing. He said they're all a load of shite. He said leave the ATT leads alone. So obviously I'll just pull the plugs one at a time, check them, clean them, maybe replace them, um, and then use the original ATT leads. Because like I say, if it's not broke, it's not getting fixed. You know, Try that again, eh? Got halfway through and wifey for me. So, yeah, what I was about to say is if it's not broke, it doesn't have to be fixed. We've got the fuel, the fuel, the water pump off. As you know, took that off ages ago. Um, <clears throat> I'll take the inlet manifolds off, the fuel rail off. Um, that'll give me access to the valley so we can clean it all down properly. Then I can get the rocker covers off. Check the rockers, make sure all the insides is clean, which I know it is because it runs great. And then I can redo the gasket and then clean it right down. You can tell by the bottom, it has an oil leak. But obviously when we when we come to put it back together, we want it as clean as we can. So we will sort that out as we go forward. So, um, so yeah, that'll be a job. I'll probably do that tomorrow if I can, to be honest. Because once I've started on the gearbox, uh, sorry, the engine, 
and it's all clean and serviced and with a new clutch and then I can put the engine in the gearbox back together and stick the fucking thing back in the car so yeah I haven't touched it for a week we've both been busy myself and Connor um, we haven't done anything at all literally for a week so I've got to pull my finger out and get back onto it because obviously we've got to get it done and ready for the summer so it's coming together just a bit of an update for you then so all the rear suspensions all back together the drive shaft is on this side there's no play in the wheel that's all fine so I was right um, I've got the spare ring to do the front the radiators are in the plumbing's about 90% done I've just got to find a way of fixing the other fan onto that side if not I've got spare fans in the garage that I can use um, because obviously that radiator is that way but the other radiator is that way so technically it's inside out so I've got no brackets but I will see what I can figure out where there's a will is a way you know how it is I'll sort it always do um, and then we can go from there so I'm going to put everything away and get a scrub look at the state of my hands I'm fucking minging so I'm going to put us all away strap it and wrap it and then go and get washed and get ready for class so I'll get battered tonight by a gang of kids okay we're at the business end today what I'm going to do today is take the top of the engine apart before I do that as you know yesterday I took off the clutch to have a look at the clutch now I've just got off the phone to Vince the clutch is down there on the floor I've just got off the phone to Vince <coughs> obviously Vince is the engineer who built the car who, who owns RV Dynamics he's the V in RV anyway the clutch he said has done about 3,000 miles it's almost brand new and it's a heavy duty custom made one he said so you don't need to change the clutch but what he does recommend is I put the clutch plate back on the clutch, take it down to an engineer's and have it balanced. Because it was him who told me it had a little judder, but obviously I've not driven it fast enough to feel that yet. He said, so the best thing to do is to get the clutch plate and the flywheel balanced. It shouldn't need skimming, um, but obviously if I give it to an engineer, they can do it all, and then I'll get it back looking all sexy, shiny and new, put it back together. So that's a job for later on. What I'm gonna do today is take the top of the engine apart so I'm going to set the camera up on the sides and I'm going to mark obviously and the bonus is doing these videos is I can play them back and see where everything goes so the first thing we'll do is we'll mark the butterfly arms so as you rotate the butterfly that does the two throttles on either side so we know which one's the near side which one's the driver's side so we can do all of that so we'll mark them then I'll disconnect and mark all of the injector plugs so that the injector plugs go on the correct injectors when we put it back together. Um, then we'll disconnect and take off the fuel rail. Fuel rail comes off just by taking off those two bolts, so there'll be 20 nuts, I mean. Obviously V12 through threat, so there'll be 24 nuts and washes goes in a little tub. Take all that off. Once all that's off, and we can mark up all of these vacuum hoses so we know where everything goes is, make sure that we understand how all that's rooted. Um, once we've got all that done, um, disconnected all the, the crossover pipes here um, once we've got all these disconnected so we know where all that goes and we've photographed everything then I'll take off the big nuts that are just down there which you probably can't see because of this light so let me see if I, yeah there you go get around there see down nuts there again 24 of them holds on the manifolds but because it'll be independent I can do six at a time and take all the inlet manifolds off as one big union put them on the bench or underneath the bench out of the way and then they can be cleaned up and changed once I've done all that I'm going to clean all the outsides of the engines down as much as I can before I open it and that way I'm not getting any crap inside it um, I'm not going to jet wash it obviously because the inlet manifolds will be open it's just going to be done with two brushes and cloths and buckets and buckets of tissues so we're going to give it a good scrub and a good clean so I've got access now one of the things we're going to do is we're going to take off the rocker covers because it's got an oil leak coming out the rocker cover and obviously we'll fix that put new gaskets in and seal it all up but also one of the things Vince has just told me is the shims that are underneath the camshafts which you'll see later on I won't be opening the engine today but you'll see that in another video in the future the shims underneath um, apparently they can wear and um, if they wear too much it burns out the valve so what we're going to be doing at a point later on is rotating the engine around and putting the feeler gauges in and marking the sizes of all the gaps and then if any of them are different I've got to take the camshafts off 
take the the shims out which i'll show you later on um and then obviously we're going to go up to vince and he's going to put them on his special machine it's like a skimming machine so i imagine it's a cnc type thing similar to how you'd um skim a head a cylinder head so it'll be like a a rotating flat cutter thing that just skims across the surface and machines it down to within a couple of thousandths of an inch so anyway way beyond my my level of um uh, skill and equipment so it's a proper engineering job which is why we'll give it to vincey chaps so anyway that's where we're up to for today so i'm gonna set the camera up start marking and um start stripping down what i'll probably do is just put the first the next bit on a time lapse so you can see what's going on Right, this is the fuel rail. It sits like that. It sits about there. Obviously it's all disconnected and off. Now, tracks are on the floor. These are the injectors. There's a little O-ring goes on there. It seals in. Let's see, just in there. O-ring seals. Now, as part of fixing these, what I'll do, I'll just pull this one off and show you. 
it's easy to do I will order off Tinterweb a set of new seals you see that a little rubber seal there that sits on the injector nozzle like that and then that is held in place by these little plates and them two screws I've just took off and it's just a compression fitting and then obviously that's where it squirts the fuel through that hole into the injector manifolds just above the spark plugs so the spark plugs there and the fuel goes in there obviously between the valves and all that stuff on the top of the cylinder head so um we'll recondition all of this and we'll put brand new seals on it um and i'll obviously just give it a little clean there's nothing really you can do to the injectors and as we know it was all running fine so it's just going to be a cosmetic clean and a new seal kit the new seal kits they're not expensive they're about i don't know 30 maybe 40 quid something like that which is expensive when you consider all these units buying in a packet of fucking o-rings but obviously they've got to be the right shape and the right size so we'll get that when i yeah uh, sorry we'll do that later on and obviously yes that is petrol dripping out and no i'm not worried because as you all know i'll just leave that there on me my little work stand that's where i put the camera look in that um but yes yeah, say the petrol will act as a degreaser so just there look yeah see where we just dribbled a bit of petrol it's already taking all the grease off so i'm just gonna wipe it off my hands when i find me roll the blue wipe which is over here on the back of the car so there's the fuel rail off what i'll do is i'll put the camera back on the little stand thing put it back on a time lapse now i've explained how that works and i'll take off this assembly here don't need that now that can go in the bin I'll put that on there um i'll take off this inlet manifold then i'll take off the other inlet manifold and then we can start cleaning won't take long it'll take me about half an hour maybe 40 minutes but obviously because you're doing it on time lapse it'll take about two minutes maybe three um but again i'll um i'll leave the camera on so you can see what's going on so there you go don't be scared of these big jobs it's just it's just it's just what it, well, it is what it is it's got to be done but the way people like or the way i explain it to people who go how do you know well how do you know i say did you have meccano as a kid and you go yeah and say well it's just a meccano set that's all it is it's a great big meccano set it's just got bigger parts in with bigger pieces um and the reason i know about jag v12s is because this is the fucking third one i've worked on obviously my own had a v12 in um two of them because the first one took the knock because of some knobheads but that's another story so we're getting it
Okay, we've got the inlet manifolds off. I'll go through that on the bench and show you how that works. But what we've got here is obviously the holes into the cylinder head where the um, the fuel, the, the, the sprayed fuel goes in. Um, one of the things that you'll have probably seen on the video there is these. If you haven't got one of them, get one of them little magnets on a stick. What I've been doing, what I'll tend to do is I'll loosen the nut off and then I'll just wind the nut up and it sticks to the to the magnet on the stick hole. So if you drop a washer, you can pick it up. And because these engines are aluminium, you'll only pick up magnetic stuff. See, it's sticking to that nut there, but won't stick to the engine. See, it's all aluminium, but it will get the the nuts and bolts there. So, worth the waiting gold and bloody things for picking stuff up. Right, so, before I take the other side off, what I'm gonna do is just shovel loads of tissue down these just to stop anything from falling in in the future. Many, many moons ago when I built my first V12 on me, on my gray one, on the original one, I had it on an engine stand and we, we took all the sump off and we checked everything out. And while it was in this state, uh, with, with the two manifolds off and all the plugs out and everything else, right? I dropped the washer, literally just a little, little tiny farty washer. And obviously the fucking first thing it is, it went straight down the hole. Um, and I'm, oh my God, how am I going to get that out? So we tried with the, um, with the magnet. We dropped the magnet down. Nothing, not a chance. And I thought, oh my God, that come down. Now what has happened is just pure by chance the way the engine was, the bloody valve was open, so it had come down and it had skidded, um, slipped off the valve and managed to drop inside the fucking um, the piston on top of the, it was sitting on top of the piston head. So, uh, so luckily enough, it was empty. It was full of um, full of nothing. We drained all the oil in there because it was on a stand. I managed to twist it 180 degrees. We put a big sheet of carboards under the engine. And we just shook it like fuck, and eventually it fell out of the hole, right? <laughs> Honestly, it fell out of the hole where the spark plug went, and I managed to get this washer back. I haven't got an engine stand anymore, so if that happens now, I'd be knackered. I'd take, I'd have to take everything off to get the um, the engine out, get the engine apart. So you've got to be super careful that nothing can fall down inside your bores and end up in your pistons, because as soon as you turn it over, bang, that's a piston gone, that's a valve gone, that's your engine gone. So again, if you're going to do this type of work, be aware of stuff that can go wrong, learn from our mistakes, and hopefully don't make the same mistakes again. Now, when it was on time-lapse, what I did is I numbered all the plugs, look, so um, plug number four for injector, plug number, oh yeah, number three, number four, um, number five is there, some fucking where it fell over, I don't know where it's gone, right, but anyway, oh, that's a five, Just my wonky handwriting, number six, so... When we put it back together, we know to go in the right place. Now, the other thing, this is a little argument you could have here, is if you have a look at the loom, they're all spaced out and you can only really go to one plug. But, is it worth it for the sake of fucking two minutes? Just sort it out. Like them two, there's a chance you could get them two the wrong way down, but everything else is pretty much self-explanatory. It can only go in the one place. But it doesn't matter. I've marked it so that when it goes back together, it goes back together easy. So that's where we're up to. I'm going to put this back on the time lapse and take the other side off. Um, and obviously I'll put the tissue in first before I start and then get a bit of this cack off me. Hand.
Right, I was just about to take off the inlet manifolds when my mate phoned me. That was Mike, who owns Red Nemesis. Hello, Mike. So, the only challenge I've got here, which is not a challenge, underneath there, there's a black hose, which you might be able to see. It's the Jubilee clips are loose. It's been undone. I might have to just figure out how to get that off. I might just have to rag it. That there is the tick-over valve, so... There's a little nut down here somewhere, which you might be able to see, but it's in the shade. If you adjust that, that adjusts the air intake into the engine, which helps you adjust the tick over. Um, I can't remember. Idler valve, that's what it's called. That's the idler valve. Um, so, I'm going to stick this back in the little gizmo holder thing, and then hopefully I'll be able to lift this right off. I'm just going to have a little check like I've missed that vacuum hose there. That'll have to come off. There you go, disconnected, that was easy, wasn't it? So, um, only because it wraps around that water pipe there. But, not major, so we'll sort that out. Right, so if I pull that hose through there, oh yeah, it's come off anyway, look. So just so I know where this all goes, stick that back on there, stick that back on there. Tighten up my oil filler cap again. Off. There you go, now that should just lift right off. So let me put this back on the holder and... Um Right, we're recording again. Let's have a look at that. So, like I say, everything now should be disconnected. This should lift straight off, with the exception of that hose on that end. Like that. So, because it's not coming off square. I have to do this waggle. Right, so lift it from the middle. There you go. Yeah, it's just that hose. Oop, right, I'm going to leave it on there. Screws out there. That's a breather pipe, and that's it. That's the second. Let me get around this side. That's the inlet manifold off of the far side. So that's that hose there. Look, see that one? That's the hose that was connected. So I'll take that off. But I can give these all a, another a further strip and another clean. Put them back together, so I'll put that down there on the other one. And then I'll do me paper towels down the board's trick and show you what's going on. Actually, before I do that, I get the sun behind me. Right, well you can just see, if I can get the angle right with the sun, if you look down the bores there, look, you can see the top of the inlet valves. Um, I'm just not sure you'll get that, the angle right with the camera, but anyway, there are the inlet valves in there, so what I'll do, I'll shove a bit of tissue back down the holes, stop down the bores, and stop any pack getting down it.
is it? Right. One more to do. There you go. Sorted. Right, let's see that off there. Make sure we're still recording. Oh, it's fucking gone off. Okay then. Both inlet manifolds are off. I've put my little bit of tissue down. All the bores to stop any rubbish falling in. And then from the front, I've got a, a breather here, which I'll clean out. So that's what lets the hot air and the like the gases inside the engine, the breather pipe for the engine, come out, and it feeds from there and it goes back in through a tube that was there into the inlet, um, the the inlet box, the air, air cleaner box, right down there. That's both of the inlet manifolds. Obviously, I'll put them in um, in the garage out of the way. Now, what I'll do is I'll probably take off this sub-loom because that loom there I'll move that that little sub-loom is the fuel injectors sorry not the fuel injectors the fuel injector plugs so if I take that off it'll clean it off then I can get rid of the HT leads get them out the way and then all this then is nice and clean and can be cleaned and scrubbed and hoovered and made to look sexy again so that once it goes back hello princess once it goes back it's all okay what I'm going to do is take off all of the HT leads and obviously there's 12 of them um, and I haven't got a manual handy to remember what goes where so I'm going to mark it so I'm just going to say that this one here is number one and number one is the front left corner so I'm going to count them one two three four five six and then seven eight nine ten eleven twelve and go back that way all right so that one there if you follow it down goes to plug lead number one I'm going to need two hands here because I'm going to mark them all, okay? So I'll put this back on the screen, but when we come to reassemble, we'll have we'll mark up number one with that number one there. And I know I'm going round this way, right? So I'm going anti-clockwise, um, but I'll go one, two, three, four, five, six, and so on. And then mark with cylinders so that when we come to put it back together, we know which lead goes where, and we get them all back in the right place first time. So little bit of messing around but it's um, again it okay so we're up and running so first one lead number one right so that one goes to the very front left right left so that's plug lead number one now Number two is going to be this one, but I'm not going to write number two on it because that would be there. So I'm going to go, it's going to this one here, which is 11. So we go one, two, three, four, five, six, and then, oh, hang on, seven, eight. Okay, so remember now. And again, this is more for me for when I put the bloody thing back together, but that is going to be number eight. So a little bit of tip X and draw a little sexy number eight like that. Okay, so six on that side, number seven, and fucking hell. Oh, these are on tight. Oh, you bastards, they don't want to damage you. Damaged. Corrosion, fucking hell. Nice, okay. I've got to redo that one. I'll show you in a minute what's come off. It's, it's ripped the plug off. But it's going to be cleaned. And I've got loads of spare HT leads in my garage. Okay, the next one here is that one. That one goes to... Number five. One, two, three, four... That one there is five. <laughs> Cut. 
could just put them back. In any order that you want. But they're all different lengths. Five, that one there. Goes there. So we've got six, seven, eight, nine, ten. little sexy number 10 I'm just going to do that all the way down but I don't get it on right so that one there goes to one two number three right, again. so it's worth when you Stripping all of these down, just being systematic like this, it might take a couple of minutes more, but makes life so much more easier when you come to put it back together. So that was number three. And then that one there. Let's go into number seven. That one there. Six. <laughs> now, right, that stupid looking fucking thing, that's a number six, right, because oh, I'll see if that will wipe off. Yeah, I'll try and redo it, a proper number six. There you go, so that one with all the cack on it, that's number six. This one here, next one, number 11. Let me just check, yeah, number 11. Oh, again. Nice little sexy number 11. And the one next to it is number 2. Two, maybe up to that one there. That one there is coming through here. I'm going to seven, eight, nine. Numero nine and then we've got this one here. It should be going to number four, one, two, three, four. Yep, There's only one left. Should we go on to number 12? Yeah, 12. Oh, you bastard, there's another one there, look. So we've got one more 
Mori je. I just want to come off. There you go. Yeah, that's fine. That was number 12. There you go. And then one more. That's the HC lead. The only one it can be, but I'll mark it anyway. H T. Now, let's find one of these with markings on it. These are the super duper, if you can see that. These are the super duper Bosch leads. Um, and these are about £120 a set. And apparently they're the best you can get, right? When I had my V12, I went through about three different sets of leads and it never ever run right. There's loads of old videos. You have to go back through the old stuff to see what's going on. Right, but in the end, I bought at one of the kit car shows a set of Magnatech, and there were, there were about 10 mil, 10 mil thick leads. Um, and they were supposed to be the dog's bollocks, yeah, 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 the best you are, the best you can get. It was just the fucking same as all the others. So, you'll advertise them as being the best thing since life's dead, but in the real world, they're not, right? But anyway, that's that. Now, somewhere on here, there should be a number one marked. Let me just clean this off. Where's me squirty stuff? Where's me WD-40? Right, so I just put a little bit on there and rub this off with a tissue and then you'll be able to see what I'm doing. Because if you haven't done what I've just done, obviously you need to know where to start. It's all very well saying number one is the front left corner as you're looking at it from the back of the car. But you need to know where to start. Now what I can see on this one, but I'm gonna show you it on the camera anyway. Is any markings? Ah, there it is, that's what I was looking for. Right, okay. Turn this off and put it back on so I can see what I'm looking at. Back again. What I was looking for was that number one there. See? Alright. And that arrow. So, if you haven't marked it the way I've marked it, <clears throat> and you just got a beard dizzy and a, um, a pack of leads in your hands. Oh, glad I sliced my finger open. Never mind, it's a bit of shaking, it won't do you any harm. So, what was I going to say? Yeah, if, if all you've got is the manual, you need to know which is number one. So, number one is this one. And then the manual will tell you which cylinder is number one, whether it's this one. I'm going to move that out of the way. Whether it's this one, or whether it's that one. Or it could be that one. Or it could be this one. It depends on which way they draw the diagram in the book. Now, if I remember rightly, I think number one was here. Okay, but that's according to the manual. I'm not going to have that problem now because all I've got to do when I put that pile of leads back on in the future, all I do is I start there and I go, okay, number one goes to that plug there. And then wherever number two, if you like, goes to, I can't remember, let's say it was that one there and then number three goes there number four goes there so i'll just play this video back and that's how i know where everything goes so that's one of the reasons i'm doing these videos partly for you to see what i'm doing but to be honest with you 99 percent of it is for me so that when i come to reassemble I, I just refer back to the video and go how did this go how did that go 
because like everybody else, I keep putting my fucking my Haynes manuals down and my wiring diagrams and can't remember where I put them. So that's why I've done what I've done. I've just spent about five minutes with a two an Al toothbrush, a bit of blue roll, some WD forty and some thinners, and I've just given it a bit of a wipe and see that little bit of leaf there look. That's why we have tissued here so nothing can fall down inside the balls and there's loads of it in. So that's what the engine's gonna look like. At the moment it looks like that. Black. And it will look like that. So I wanna get it as clean as it can before I start stripping it down. So that was just a bit of an experiment to see what it'll come up like. What I'll do now is I'll take the pedestal off and all the bits at the back and um take it right back down to the loom so when i put the engine back in the car it's going in like this it's going in without the manifolds and all that on and then i can rebuild it in the car the reason i'm going to do that is it gives me a bit more clearance to get it in the motor obviously it was a tight squeeze getting it out <clears throat> and it's a lot lighter without all the manifolds and all the gizmos so i can put us all in put us all together get it back in the car um, but in the meantime, I can get us all clean before I start stripping it down. That way, when I know it's all clean, I know there's no crap going to fall inside the engine. Okay, I've spent... Oops, banging my head on the dangly plants. A couple of hours. WZ40 and thinners. And cleans it up. Didn't need to do it, obviously, but... Better to clean it off as much as we can. So what I'm thinking is I've got it degreased. If I put the manifolds back on, then I can jet wash it and it'll get rid of all the little particles. Because although it's clean, you're still getting little bits of cack there. So obviously I've got to wipe it all off with cloths and that. A little tissue. But that's done. Start your motors off. I'll just give you an idea. I don't know if you've seen it. That's what the whole engine looks like. But just a couple of seconds with a bit of WZ40 and a toothbrush. Comes up like that. So that's hope that's basically what I'm aiming for for the whole engine. It'll take me a couple of days. Um and if you know of any good chemical cleaners that I can spray on it and just jet wash. Happy days. I've got TFR at home, but it hasn't worked, there's a load of crap. It's the pink TFR, you need the yellow TFR, which I can't get my hands on. Um the yellow TFR just cuts through all the grease and the pink stuff isn't as strong it's like one's commercial and the other's residential well the residential stuff's rubbish but anyway <clears throat> i'm gonna have a little go at the bottom it's um it's half five now so i'll do a little bit more then i'll put everything away and get off and go and get a scrub and get ready for something to eat cleaned off all the engine um and i've taken off all but one of the bolts on the flywheel now there's a little retaining clip here which you can see what happens is when you put that on put your bolts through you bend up these little tabs see them tabs you bend them up and that stops the nuts from twisting so what i've done is i've marked it there so i can put it back on in the same place and what you can see on the floor, which doesn't make any difference, I'll show you hang on. Right, I've got all the bolts in order, top and bottom. And the same thing over there, top and bottom, so that I can put all the bolts back in, in the same place. So now with a bit of luck, I'll find a good screwdriver, this flywheel should just leave it off. Gonna <coughs> 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 come off. <coughs> These pins. All right, looks of it. Princess. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's 
just going to be a systematic waggling. Prize it off. And it's coming. Woo! Right, that's nice and heavy because it's just landed on my toe. But the bone is a bit landed on my toe. <coughs> 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 Is it not done any damage? <coughs> That's the flywheel. This is custom made by Vince. <coughs> and at the back there, you can see where he's fixed on the drive plate to his custom made flywheel. So, what I'll do. I'll connect the cover plate up to this and then I will phone some engineers tomorrow because it's almost six o'clock in the evening and I'm just putting everything away. I will contact some engineers tomorrow and try and get this in and have it balanced. But, see them holes there? That's where I think... <coughs> That's where it's been balanced in the past. I only do it up on a super super lathe and then they drill out little bits of metal little bit at a time to get it to balance so anyway i'll have all this cleaned up by a professional engineer it's beyond my skill level to be honest and um oh it's not fucking light i'll tell you that i'll get that hopefully dropped off tomorrow so if i can get that in tomorrow and get it back early next week then early next week we can start the rebuild so what i'm going to do now just from here look is line up that plate actually i can't put that plate back on because it won't go over those rings because yes i can yes i can i can just put the, the bolts in nice and light sorry i'm just being a divvy right so i just put the bolts in like that basically i just want to make sure everything goes back where it was And I've got no chance of losing anything. Because you can imagine, can't you, phoning a scrapyard up and saying, have you got a set of bolts that hold the flywheel onto a Jag V12? You look at you like you were mad. Oh, yeah, mate. Keep them in the drawer there. So, there you go. So what we'll do is we just put all these bolts back where they came from. And then I'm not losing nothing then. And then obviously when I come to reassemble it, I know I've got all the parts. And it's all just gonna go together nice and smooth. Well that's the plan anyway, it never fucking works that way, does it? There you go, I'll put these what next set on here. Put these in. Right, so you can see I'm not tightening them up or nothing. I'm just putting them back in. So I don't lose them basically. Um and if you put them back in the same hole, when we come to reassemble it, I know everything's gonna go back together. Now if you didn't know what you were doing and you looked at this sort of undressed engine you'd to be honest you'd probably cheat yourself and go fuck me what have i done there but as like i said on a different video or earlier in this one if you're gonna attempt something like this take photos of everything you do years ago before cameras with phones on when i was young i'd write everything down so i'd say oh the blue wire goes there and the red wire goes there and the big bolt goes there and the little bolt goes there but now everyone's got an HD phone in the pocket. Just put it on records, go boom. <clears throat> and if you've got no space in your phone to store all the memory, nowadays everyone uploads it to YouTube anyway, just save it. Just put your thing in your, in your laptop and save it all. Yeah, look at that there, look. I'm not sure if you can see that. That there. It's just all khaki oil, so again, we can get all of this. Cleans off. 
Yeah, what's this right? Which one? WD forty. Mm. Mm -hmm. I don't know what I've done with WD40, can't find it, but I've got a bit of thinners in this one. Uh, just a bit of. Let's get a fresh bit of that. Yeah. <laughs> a little bit of blue rag. A bit of tissue paper. And I'll watch this. difference in that. Just wiping off the oil. You see that? Just for a couple of seconds. Wiping it down. Takes all of that crap off. Now that's the sump plug there, I haven't drained the oil yet. It's the drain the oil, I've got to set the hoist up and lift it up in the air. But we can sort that out. So, yeah, that's what we're up to. I'm going to put all the tools away now, put this to bed. And then, like I say, tomorrow morning, I'll be on the phone to all the local engineers early to see if we can balance that flywheel. Hopefully I can get it dropped off by lunchtime and get it back early next week, Tuesday or Wednesday or so next week and then start reassembling it. So that's the plan. I'll see you all in a bit.